the wacky world of Multimedia J. has dropped below 60, so I've got the fans going to try and dry out the house. Don't know how successful I'll be, but it's a better dew point than what I've been seeing. What I have been seeing, though, is a lot of this. Normal for Connecticut, being less than an hour from the ocean, is actually around 60% or 2 o'clock. This stuff, though, yeah, and it's been persisting for weeks on end. This would be why I've been having the trouble that I've been having with some of the things like the condensation on the other camera's touch panel. We're not done with Monolith either. I thought I was done the last two times I said we're done with Monolith. But anyways, first and foremost, for the people still talking about side cooling, how do you expect side cooling to work with a setup like this? Fortunately, there's little air inlets on the sides of the door, but if I really want to get some air into this thing, just pop the door. And there it all is. So front back is the way things are gonna work for this thing. Not really in trouble thermal-wise, though, so I could even turn the fans down if I really wanted to, despite the wet the uh, temperature in here. Better cooling and a more power-efficient processor makes that possible. So anyways, started this thing up again this morning, and it said the SSD with Windows on it wouldn't detect. So I figured maybe the fast boot, well, after a restart anyways, then it all worked again. So I think the fast boot is a little too fast. So I turned off the fast boot on the motherboard and in Windows, because I've gotten glitches from the hybrid hibernate shutdown sequence and things like that. So why, I mean, it's not that slow to begin with. We have an SSD, it's not a mechanical drive, so fast boot is kind of moot. Oh brother, that's a t-shirt waiting to happen. Now let's hopefully wrap up this monolith stuff for real this time via the user benchmark benchmark. This is something I ran Tuxedo a couple of times. This is one that has those like ship names for your computer and stuff like Sailboat, Destroyer, Tree Trunk. Anyways, um, I haven't run this in a while, so let's run this for Monolith. Benchmark engine running. And don't forget, this is with the motherboard running in power save mode, even though Windows is in balance mode. I turned off some of the uh, other power save things like PCI Express. It's not turned on by default because it didn't really affect the wattage any. Plus, I mean, this thing bottoms out in the 40s. A more efficient power supply will probably close the gap with the crap top from 2010, which means this thing, when not doing very much, would be you know, basically a laptop. But even then, you still have the TV to consider in terms of power consumption and the sound system that's currently doing the audio. While this thing is set to auto switch between the AV receiver and the TV speakers, because I'm running double digital HDMI for the sound. So it either goes, it either goes, image goes here and it duplicates the AV receiver, which is useless. The AV receiver plays the sound, or turn the receiver off, everything goes to the TV. Works out all right, I guess. Drive benchmark on H and K. There's no I drive in here for the extras drive yet. That will be coming soon after the next New Age shipment. There's some really low profile SATA cables in there that I might be able to use to get that last port up and running. Just gotta check the length of the cable before placing the order. Otherwise, I'd have to use it for something closer to the uh, to everything with that port that is covered by the graphics card. Sequential, sequential, etc., etc. Sequential write test. 509, yeah, that sounds about right for this SSD. Of course, the bandwidth was maximized over SATA and PCI Express anyways. That's why I have these funky new connectors like M2, which this board supports. So I could theoretically put the system on an M2 drive if I ever feel like buying one. I got a feeling though that these circuit board drives are the latest and greatest, so they'll be priced as such for the foreseeable future until something better comes out. 517, yeah, two out of the three drives are SSDs. Not faster than the other one though, but doesn't have the storage capacity. I could always reverse the two, have games on the older SSD. 
The bigger question is, when some of the SSDs from the portables, when those conk out and I can bring them back to the main system, what do I do with those SSDs in my collection? I'm not going to have the SATA ports for them. Maybe go external and put them in the consoles. Ooh, a plane. This is obviously the 3D part of it. Hey, 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 cool. That too, huh? These cutesy little graphics things here. You see the lights going. Um, this tests something or another. Forgot what it was called. A little particle effect test there. Was this in the last one? Oh, I, this was in the last one though. And on the integrated graphics on the Turd Shiba, it gave me a slideshow. And here come the results. Oh, we got some big ships now. Gaming, aircraft carrier, desktop, aircraft carrier, workstation, battle cruiser. So cool, uh, named after all Navy ships now with this thing. The status, this PC is performing as expected, 56th percentile. Out of 100 PCs, this 44th performed better. Yeah, sorry rich kids with your thousand dollar processors. It must be fun having money to burn, whatever. This CPU is the business. It demolishes everyday tasks such as web browsing, office apps, and audio video playback, da da da. Moderate workstation, even light server workloads. With a gaming score of 89.2, suitability for 3D gaming is excellent. It's an excellent, excellent good, I'm hoping so. 16 gigs, etc., etc. Da 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 da. Suboptimal background CPU reduces accuracy. Oh, okay, so maybe I should shut off the weather app and the stuff that was. Uh, anyways. Graphics card, 1060, 93.3, towards the top, good. MX200, good. VX200, almost as good. So I picked the right drive to run the system on. The WD Green, a little above average, that's the mechanical drive for the games. Performing way below expectations, though, is the data drive. Of course, that's one of the, uh, that's a drive that's not really all that great. I don't think there's any smart warnings on it anyways. But it's a mechanical drive. A lot of people are probably doing all kinds of SSDs and stuff. Performing below expectations. The RAM is apparently not running at the right speed. Well, anyways. Latency, etc., etc., etc. Custom PC builders, etc. Typical B150 AM2 builds. Typically, they're not good at gaming. Surfboard, gunboat, sailboat. <laughs> the most common CPU. Ooh, the Core i5, 6400 and the 6600. The non-Ks and the 67, yeah, people don't put Ks in these things. But again, the frequency differences. Uh, they use the integrated graphics. GTX 1060, GTS 450, okay. People love their Samsung SSDs. I'll stick with Crucial, thank you very much. As well as RAM and things along those lines. So yeah, pretty decent benchmarks with the uh, boat test, as it were. Aircraft carrier, aircraft carrier, battle cruiser. I think I still have one computer around here that registers as a tree trunk. So that's an improvement. And that's it with Monolith for now. We, ha we now have to figure out the whole tuxedo thing. Do, do, oh wait a minute, wrong computer. Here it is. Here's what's left of the venerable old beast. No, the back panel's off too. So we gotta put some stuff back in this thing and get it working again. For secondary system purposes, taking over the folks' house to play some games on their TV if I happen to be the entertainment for a family get-together. Folks kind of like when I show up with Burnout Paradise and my step-relatives can be kept busy via console-esque games on some kind of computer, but without taking Monolith with me. <laughs> also, every single drive that doesn't have a home, let's put it in here and find some use for it somehow until it clanks out. Even that half-broken one that wouldn't work before, which might have been because of a loose cable. So, yeah, um, experimental stuff. Also, any overclocking experiments that I want to do, that will be taking place here. So, we need to make some decisions. How are we going to get this thing back into service? It does still have a Windows 10 license, so it can function very well as a good secondary system. And I might bring back the overclocks. I just won't reinstall Windows 10 anniversary updates. So, let's make some decisions here as to what's going where, what's doing what, and how this thing's going to function without a fan controller. Right then, fans have been figured out. I'm keeping push-pull on the processor, because this one gets hotter than the Intel does. I put one of the fans from Monolith as a new exhaust fan. Might spin at a higher RPM, too, And from what I'm seeing. This is all hooked back up. Now the question is where to get the SSD from. Got some spaghetti to work out up top. Next question, where to get the SSD from this go-round? Well, that's a pretty easy question to answer. 
basically, um, basically, yeah. Uh, we don't want to take it from the Silver Bullet. Silver Bullet SSD is only SATA 2, this is a SATA 3 board. So we want to keep the older deprecated SSD in the Silver Bullet and keep it usable for Linux experiments and other stuff later. There is one SSD though that I don't anticipate making very much use of that can come into the system. Let's go get it. There it is! The missing Venturi! I knew I had enough of these things to go into Monolith. It was buried with the fans in the parts bin as I was getting taking a little inventory of the fans that I have available. Cool! So the interesting part is I also remembered... Whoa! <laughs> watch it! I also remember that there's another fan header right next to the graphics card. So I used to always unplug the thing by mistake when pulling the graphics card out. So what I am going to do is take this little thin cable here for this one, and we'll have the other 140 from Monolith be the intake fan for this as well. I also have the option of having an, a top fan in that system, but I'm not going to use it anytime soon. You can do bottom fans as well. There's so many fans you can use in that system. However, what I think I want to do is have 140s doing all the work with Tuxedo in terms of side fans and other stuff as well. Let's go get that hooked up, and uh, I think we'll use it even though it won't be very efficient. I think we'll use a non-standard hookup compared to what we've done before for the side fan and plug it into the system fan header down there in the corner, which has actually got room for a PWM if we really wanted to, but I don't think the built-in fan controller on this board controls more than the processor and other stuff, so this thing's going to be loud even if we turn on the energy saving stuff. Right, I think Monolith is going all Venturi right now. That's what I'm talking about. Nice low deep hum. The only 120 left in the entire system is on the processor. Now powered entirely by Venturis. This is the kind of sound difference we're talking about here. As the thing starts up with its combo light, then crank up, nope, back only. Gets that loud. Now the two in the front. Fans 3 Windows is already going, and that's with normal boot by the way. No fast boot either on the process or either on the motherboard or in the OS. And that's what it sounds like with the door closed. Nice low hum. No whiny anything, unlike back in the day. There, the two 140s from Monolith stock fans, aka with the turbulence things on them, are gonna be the exhaust and the side fan in tuxedo now. This is a little bit obstructed, and I had to cut another piece of uh, honeycomb to get the screw to fit in on screw number four. But everyone repeat after me. Hack job. Yeah, par for the course with this system, especially with its new secondary role. Now it's time to answer the SSD question. I don't want a system running primarily off a mechanical drive anymore. So where's the SSD gonna come from? Well now, this is going to come from a system, oh, push the battery in too, that almost was coming loose, lose all the CMOS settings. The SSD is going to come from a source that, well, a system we haven't worked with in a very long time. You'll recognize it the minute you see it, but it hasn't seen regular use in a very long time and I don't anticipate it seeing very much use for quite some time from here on out, now that it's been upgraded to Windows 10. The crap top, Athlon 2 dual core, circa August of 2010, a back to school special, clearance special, back in those days. This thing unfortunately suffers from the infamous white screen of death, where the screen will randomly just blank out to solid white. Might be a loose ribbon cable, might be a dying graphics system, could be anything. Regardless, I don't feel like fixing it for in the immediate future. <laughs> So, the whole time this thing is not being used, it's taking up an SSD. Well, not for long. The SSD is coming out of this thing. Whenever I feel like fixing the display, I'll revisit this again. If I ever do, it was upgraded to Windows 10 during the free upgrade period. So let's get that A Data 120 gig out of there and get ready to put the system back on it. Got it! SSD is in. Optical drive is hooked up, both is powered off of one rail grand total. I'm going with the R6850 for the graphics card, the old Radeon, because I lack the proper headers on the old 610 watt power supply to properly power the Kepler card. Not that I'd want Kepler performance on this thing to start with anyways, until I can figure out what to do about that those headers that I don't have. There are adapters that'll turn Molex into additional power. I don't know if I want to go to that extent though. I've seen instability caused by too many adapters once before. 
plenty of room for drives though. If we want to put drives in here that I otherwise wouldn't use, and of course we can always go back to the maxed out setup that I used to have earlier. Also, retroactively convert the old five and a quarter bays to hold drives in them instead. If this thing's going to function as a server, I might as well rig it up to do so. I am leaving the card reader unplugged. That's where the floppy drive used to be because the the read-only, read-write detector thingy broke on it. So it thinks every SD card inserted into it is read-only now. So the USB ports still work. We'll use those instead. I think card readers are kind of a thing of the past for me. Floppy drives too, by a wider margin. So let's put the panels back on and bring Tuxedo back and see how much better it runs, even overclocked, without the Windows 10 anniversary update. We're ready. The spotlight is on Tuxedo now. First thing we're going to do is go into the BIOS and turn the fan controllers back on. Well, whatever we can use for that. I have HDMI 3, source HDMI 3 on the television ready to accept the HDMI out from this thing. It's not showing up yet because the machine's not on. We should be good to go. So, otherwise it's just going to boot into something that's going to error out because Windows 10 from the crap book is still on the SSD. So, ready? It's missing a few pieces, but uh, we might put something in those drive bays later on. Here's the return of Tuxedo post monolith in three two, one, go. Let's see here. HDMI 3 is showing up as a source. Taking a while to boot. We gotta get into the BIOS. But then we gotta go G-parted and nuke the drive. This is the part where it starts complaining about its experienced failures due to overclocking, etc. Yeah, there it is, right there. Even though I wasn't overclocking it when I last used it. Whatever, we're gonna overclock the crap out of it now. <laughs> All right, um, let's, let's stay on the BIOS for a second here, and let's see how the fans are spinning. A little bit of, little bit of airflow there. 140 millimeters, although some of it's blocked. And how's the case fan from, get that big fan out of the way here. Ooh, that could be a problem. There is no power to the fan. There's no power to the main fan. That's got to be a motherboard thing. Let's play with the controllers a bit. Got it. Had to do some more configuring with the motherboard because the CD drive cannot be on the serial ATA. It's got to be on stuff that's running as IDE in order to boot off of the CD drive. BIOS, man. So legacy, and I gotta do something with this space now, darn it. It's gonna be even bigger when this thing's out of here. Okay, now it works. Nice and quiet, too. It hums, just like its successor. Is that last? Yeah, the push-pull fan is spinning. Everything's spinning. So now we're gonna load Windows 10 on this bastard. Relative to Monolith, I'd say I did a very good job of hack-jobbing this design. It's not as quiet, but uh, unless it's shoved in a corner somewhere or something like that. But this is classic Tuxedo, right here, right now, running again. Now we're just going to install Windows 10 minus the, <laughs> minus the, uh, the update, the anniversary update, and then let's see if WoW still freezes. Heck, let's bring back all the classic overclocks, too. <laughs> and see if WoW freezes, even though we're gonna have to run it on a lower setting. It's too bad I couldn't bring back the Kepler card, though. This machine is the new Delosaurus. Or, it's taking lessons from it. It hardlocked, even with a fresh Win 10, no anniversary edition. <laughs> then, the, tellings, the telltale sign that it's not something in Windows or anything. It hard-locked in the BIOS when I went to turn down some settings. Yep, we've got some damaged goods on our hands here. <laughs> so however we want to take this thing out for good, well, let's start thinking about how we'd like to take this thing out for good. We've already done some damage and started it on its death spiral. How are we going to finish this? Well, I wonder what I should put in this next. It's gonna suck, though. Maybe I should try a Kingwin license to get Windows working on it again if I just don't go all in for Linux. But I've got the Silver Bullet to play with Linux on. 
Anywho. It's the beginning of the end for this poor system. <laughs> we did do some damage to the motherboard with some overclocking gone wrong earlier, apparently. Either that or those flaky RAM sockets are finally flaking out. <laughs> for good. Whatever. Kepler card. Two six-pin headers. The wrong headers for the card, but... Whatever. That card sucks anyways. If I burn it out, no big loss. Ooh, HDMI 3 is registering. Uh-oh. <laughs> In before the postcode. Beep, beep. I don't know. One of those is for if the thing won't... If there's a VGA error, like there's not enough power or something. I thought those extra two pins on, a, on an 8-pin were for ground only. No beeps! Yeah, right. This isn't gonna work. No beeps, no post. Nada. As in, not a chance. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're stuck with the Radeon, because I really don't feel like spending another penny on this piece of crap. You know what? Let's be really tough on this thing. Pull the plug. Cha-ching! Why did I ever stop playing games on Monolith to tinker with this thing again? It's like a jar of pickles after it's been opened. Somehow or another, Tuxedo got through the Final Fantasy XIV benchmark without freezing. 6652, very high, running the processor now with no turbo. I don't know if it might be a thermal thing or not. We could always recheck the Arctic Silver. Now, let's compare this to what Monolith just finished up. 7394, extremely high. <laughs> Yeah. I think we have another Delosaurus type machine on our hands. Tuxedo has no concentrated coolness now that I can't really depend on it. I don't know what exactly I want to do with this thing either. I was thinking secondary system at one point, but we could go back to the integrated graphics just for the heck of it. <laughs> uh, but we all know that Monolith is going to crush it in 3D performance. Unless I flip the power supplies around, I can't put the Kepler card back in anytime soon. And Polaris 460, well, that's the thing. I don't want to spend money on secondary systems. So, interesting. Where we go from here, I don't know. But I think I've about had enough of two computers going at the same time. So let's shut this garbage down. Ooh, Candy Crush and Donald Trump. <laughs> Windows news sections. So, what happens to Tuxedo at this point? Who knows? It works, sort of on stock clocks, maybe you'll still get a freeze every so often. But this motherboard has been terrible since I got it. Easily the worst one I've ever had. Thing is though, spending money to get a secondary system going with no concentrated coolness? Not so sure about that. This is Multimedia J, signing off. Thanks for stopping by.